Do you know what is a real bummer? When you get sick when you're traveling. I flew in to Warsaw yesterday and got sick on the plane. I have a flu, no COVID, just a regular common flu. But I feel terrible. And I had three days upcoming phot photography, street photography mainly here in Warsaw. And my wife is on a conference, so I have three days by myself photographing. So no distractions in that sense. I'm testing the XS20. Hi, it's Peter here. Yeah, I just got this and uh, wanted to take this along because I wanted to see how that performs on this type of photography, which I love. And it's supposed to be quite good for that. I usually have my own 5 and a 20 millimeter, which I absolutely love. But this time I wanted to test this brand new camera. I haven't really tested it so much. What, what I have as a lens is the uh, 27 millimeter 2.8 lens, which is roughly a 40 millimeter lens, which is one of my favorite focal lengths for street photography. And I also have a, a pro black mist filter in here so that and a funny little uh, lens hood. And, and the mist filter is because I'm also testing a few Fuji recipes which are really interesting and I'm planning on doing some black and white photography here unless I find some murals when then I will be switching to color photography. Yeah, looking forward to photographing with this and let's go. All right, here I am. It's actually the next day. I was uh, quite sick yesterday. Did a little couple hour photo walk and went straight back to hotel and slept the whole afternoon. Had a dinner and slept the whole night. I've been sleeping very well and yeah, miracle. I'm covered. And before I start, I have to say the disclaimer. This Fuji X S20 is mine. I bought it with my own money or actually with the stuff that I already had. So I didn't pay that much about the whole for this camera. But um, you know, Fuji has nothing to do with this video, nor do they know that I'm making the video. So everything I say is based on my own opinion using this for a little while. And I'm on my way to uh, the Chopin mural here in Warsaw. It's about a one kilometer walk, so it's not too far away. And Google Maps told me to go through this interesting looking park. So let's go and see if we can find the Chopin mural. Okay, the mural should be just around the corner if I have my stuff correct. Right there, if I... Oh yeah, there it is. I don't know if you can see the whole... This whole mural. Yeah, I like it. Now I just have to figure out where to photograph that. Yeah, and one more thing. This is not going to be a full review, full review of this camera because I've tested it such a short time. But after I've had it for a couple of months, I will make a full review. For now, let's continue to the second Chopin mural. Well, there wasn't a mural, but there is a Chopin museum over there. It's that building over there. And then there is this statue right here in this park. But um, let's talk about the form factor first. This camera is really small and that was one of the things that was I was drawn into it because it is actually smaller than OM5, especially when I have this pancake lens. It is a really good form factor and also it's really easy to hold the camera. It's not that uh, small in a sense and I'm, what I have here is the small rig leather case for it which makes it even better to hold. So that's one thing that has happened with uh, with uh, Micro Four Thirds, you know, in a way they've lost a little bit of their advantage in, uh, in the form factor. And that is, of course, a pity for, okay, now it's uh, against the sun, the camera, but yes, that is, of course, a little pity for Micro Four Thirds that they have kind of lost one advantage in a way, even though, of course, the system is still smaller. But if you compare this 33 millimeter at one point, 
four lens to the 12 to 40 f2.8 zoom lens. No, the difference in size is not that big. Well, actually there was. I'm lucky I went this way because then I was able to see that. It's a pretty beautiful mural. Now, there is the next one that I wanted to see. Unfortunately, I have the garbage cans right there in front of it. But before I try to try to get some images of that, let's talk about the look and feel of this camera. Fuji cameras have a very nice retro feel to it. They are all the cameras. They have a little bit different looking from the top. This one has more traditional digital uh, user interface so that it has the, the PASM uh, dial on the top. The other camera is, X, I think the X-T5 has, has a kind of like a more retro style film era, uh, what do you call these dials. But it's a funny thing how we tend to like retro looking cameras, but we still want the, uh, what do you call the features to be brand new. Or, or the latest technology inside a old looking body, which I always found to be a little peculiar. But I'm the same way, but I haven't really been able to explain why that is. So, but let's see if I can get any shots of that particular mural. Let's see how that goes. Let's put the camera here and see if I can, you know, B-roll, not this way, but let's, let's see if this, oh, there's a magnet on this, so it should hold. All right, now let's see what it is. I might take it from this side and see if that, yeah, I think that goes well. Let's see if we can play around with the thing and go a little bit down and do some fun so that it looks like the bear is. Well, let's, let's take this way and see how it goes and use the joystick to change the position of the, what do you call the focusing point. I think I got it. These images that I've taken today are, oh, the magnets are not uh, that good in a sense that there's something added to the image like I've done sometimes before. But to be honest, I really don't have had that much luck today. And like I always said, it's, it's part of the luck that photographers have. Sometimes more and sometimes less. This time it's not that bad, but let's, let's continue and I will look for the next spot to, to stop and see what I can photograph and we talk about the usability of this camera next and it's always uh, when you get a new camera you have uh, something getting used to it's it's always different the buttons are slightly different the, the menu system is slightly different everything is slightly different even though it's a camera <clears throat> which has pretty simple user interface you have the power button and then you have the shutter button and that's about it but this one particularly is quite close to uh, OM5 and EM, uh, EM1 and the OM1 because one important thing is the exposure compensation dial and it's in the back. It has the back wheel which I can use for that. And that is really good because I'm so used to that's my go-to way of making the exposure aperture priority and then using the exposure compensation wheel with the help of flag colors and uh, uh, the uh, histogram. Fuji has lenses which has the aperture ring and I've been using that for adjusting the aperture and they've been quite convenient. I kind of like it and you can set it to A also but I've been using it by hand and manually changing the aperture and I think that has been working really well. And then there were some other things that I did. Um, yeah and then of course the mode dial has some custom settings and this one has four which I could use a bit more but four is fine and you can adjust that or adjust them so that or, or assign them so that it can be either for photography and the other one can be for video and that's really crucial I have C1 and C2 for for photography and C4 uh, 3 and C4 for video yeah now there's some bad things that I don't really like about 
of uh, his ability is, of course, the uh, in memory card slot. It's under the same latch as the, what do you call, the battery, and that is something that I don't fancy that much. I would love it to be on the side, but yeah, that's what it is. That is what it is. Now that this is better to do this way. And I think those are the main uh, things about usability. Yes, and then the X app that it, they have. And that's one thing that I like about it is that I just turn it on and when I transfer the images, it will already have the GPS coordinates. I don't have to uh, do any tricks with the app to, to assign the GPS coordinates to a certain image. All I have to do is turn the app on and wait for it to disconnect and I'm good to go for the whole day and the GPS coordinates are there. I think that's a really important and good feature, which is slightly different in OM system cameras. It can be done, but it's, it requires one more step. This goes automatically. So I'm very happy about that. And, and then something about the menu system. And it's always a thing when you're getting a new camera is the menu system. You get, you need to get used to it. And uh, I think menu system here is, is quite okay. My menu where I can set the menu items that I use the most. And it's quite logical. Of course, some of the names of the things that are same with the other cameras we might have a different name or different uh, term to them. So it's always uh, a good thing to take a look at the menu. I mean, <laughs> menu, yeah, but the, the manual and see, see what things look from that perspective when you will learn the new terms for, for different items. The best way to use is to use Q menu. It has a dedicated button at the top and it's really easy to access it and then switch different parameters and different settings from your camera or for your camera to from the Q menu. And I, I think that, that's pretty close to the super control panel I had in OM system cameras and that's why this uh, using hasn't been that hard because uh, you know the, the basic idea is the same. And then what about the image quality? Well that is something that I cannot discuss that much yet because I haven't really tested it, it against my old, older cameras and uh, I can't say really say but what's really interesting is the film recipes which I think are the big 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 good parts of, of the Fuji image quality is the different film recipes like I already mentioned that I'm using the HP5 from Reggie Ballesteros who has a lot of interesting uh, Fuji content on his YouTube channel and why I watch those is, of course, about the film recipes. I found those to be really, really cool. Then I can uh, use different type of styles and, and what it means that it is possible to use JPEGs. And that's really interesting. I don't have to shoot raw. What I have is on, on C2, I do have the uh, JPEG plus raw. So I also have the raw image there so that I won't miss if I want to change the, the recipe which I can do with the Fuji software which name I don't remember right now. It's a really handy handy software and I will make some content about that software too later in this or, or on my channel later this fall. But now let's continue with the photographing of Warsaw. Let's see if I can get this gorilla pot out and I don't know where I'm going this I don't have really any plans where I want to go but let's go this way okay now I'm under the tree so it doesn't rain <laughs> that much under here some little water droplets come down but that I don't care usually rain is a really nice weather to photograph you get umbrellas you get all kinds of interesting stuff and, and you know reflections after the rain went down ground is wet. I don't know. If, let's see if that's going to happen. The only bad thing about the rain is today because I'm going home today and I already signed out from the hotel room so I can't use it anymore which is yeah a pity because if, if it's really pouring rain then I have to go back somewhere to in the shelter. It doesn't rain. Video features of this camera is the thing that I first place I got them and the, the biggest thing was open gate 6.2k which means uh, three by two videos that I can use the same material uh, vertically and horizontally which is something that my clients demand they want some uh, 
content for social media from a longer form video. And that's why OM1 wasn't sufficient anymore. And then some green screen work too, this is 422 with this, which means that it's a lot, lot better quality green screen. Even though I've done some green, green screen stuff with OM1, you can do because it's 10 bit, but it's not as good as we did or as easy as this. And then F-Log is important, which is a logarithmic uh, file with, or, or I don't know, is that or a file, but the, the I don't really know what the word is. But anyways, it is a flat profile where there is a lot more to, be, or, or I have more, able, uh, now I'm just totally out of the words, you know, it's uh, easier to grade when you have some kind of a good log file. And if log 2 is very good, the only downside is that it, you need 12,050 ISO on that. So in most cases, there need to be a, a what do you call it, an ND filter, which is, of course, something I need to carry around if I'm shooting a vlog. And um, the vlog mode that this has, which is interesting, it's uh, uh, something that is not uh, very special, it only has a little bit different UI for video work and I've set it to my vlogging when I do vlogging at my studio Then I use that because it's it's quite easy, everything is set up already for that and then I can use the C3 and C4 for professional work and what I use for my vlogs or my YouTube content is Eterna Cinema Simulation or something like that. I'm, I forgot what the name is, but I'll, I'll put it in the screen here. So the GCM that makes a really nice, almost ready footage that I don't have to grade at all. And I think that's also important. It makes the workflow slightly faster when I don't have to do that much grading, even though I've never done that much for my YouTube content anyways. And then the IBIS is fairly good and also the AF is good enough for, for my work. So there are a lot of boxes ticked with this, with this camera. Oh, we're walking through this narrow street in the old town of Warsaw. Let's talk about the conclusion of my first impression. So far, I'm really happy with the camera and it has been working really well on my trip. I haven't looked at the images at all. I don't care if I have the LCD turned off or kind of like tucked away so I don't tend to chimp that much. I know if I get it, I know why I don't. Very seldom there are surprises. But yes, what I liked about this combination, especially with the 27mm f2.8 lens, that it was easy to carry around, so small, compact. And like I said in the beginning of this video, that it's actually smaller than all in one and about the same size as on all five and with the pancake length it's even smaller and that's that's a real plus for me i, I like that a lot now we have to go away there's a car right there that's why i i really like it it's uh, pleasant to carry and the, the little case that i have it from small rig is really good it makes the grip even better and then of course the wrist strap is good so nobody can you know grab the camera from my hand because if I, know, I don't drop it and, and if i need the hand then i could just you know do this and i'm all, all set all set with that you know using the other hand for something else and i think that covers what i had to say but if you're interested in there's a video about the the reasons I got this camera in the first place. But I hope you enjoyed my video about the first impression of XS, XS20. Well, thanks for watching and bye for now.